To get something you never had, you have to do something you never did. Les Brown's a motivational speaker. He made an analogy about this. He says, imagine you're on your deathbed and standing around your deathbed are the ghosts representing your unfulfilled potential. The ghost of the ideas you never acted on. The ghost of the talents you didn't use. And they're standing around your bed, angry, disappointed, and upset. They say, we, we came to you because you could have brought us to life, they say. And now we have to go to the grave together. So I ask you today, how many ghosts are going to be around your bed when your time comes? Put God first. Put God first in everything you do. Everything that you think you see in me, everything that I've accomplished, everything that you think I have, and I have a few things. Everything that I have is by the grace of God. 40 years ago, March 27th, 1975, it was 40 years ago, uh, just this past March, I was flunking out of college. I had a 1.7 grade point average. I was sitting in my mother's beauty parlor and I'm looking in the mirror and I see behind me this woman under the dryer. Every time I looked up, she was looking at me, just looking me in the eye. And I didn't know who she was and I said, you know, she said, somebody give me a pen, give me a pencil, I have a prophecy. March 27, 1975, she said, boy, you are gonna travel the world and speak to millions of people. Now, mind you, I was flunked out of college. I'm thinking about joining the army. I didn't know what I was going to do. And she's telling me I'm going to travel the world and speak to millions of people. Well, I have traveled the world and I have spoke to millions of people. But that's not the most important thing, the success that I had. The most important thing is that what she taught me and what she told me that day has stayed with me since. I've been protected. I've been directed. I've been corrected. I've kept God in my life and has kept me humble. I didn't always stick with him, but he always stuck with me. So stick with him in everything you do. If you think you want to do what you think I've done, then do what I've done and stick with God. The thing that makes God amazing, one of the things that makes God so amazing is that he can come to you on your level. You don't have to come from a religious tradition or a faith background for God to reveal himself to you. He can reveal himself to you through a rock. He can reveal himself to you through a piece of bread because he is the rock of ages and he is the bread of heaven. He can take something that you do understand and use it to reveal something that you don't understand so that nobody is left out. God wants to put you in a place of still waters. He wants to put you in a place of still waters, not hurricanes, not tornadoes, not turbulence of any kind. He wants to put you in a place of still waters. There may be turbulence all around you, but he wants your center to be still to be calm you must have a calm place in order to deal with all the chaos in your periphery you cannot have still waters until you release or let go many of the things that are distracting you and invading your space seemingly when the enemy knows that God is going to use you in a mighty way he does everything he can to upset the very genesis of your life to kind of set you on a path of destructive behavior to limit any self-esteem that you might have he doesn't do that he doesn't fight anybody that's not destined to go anywhere but when he senses that there is greatness inside of you the attack comes early You've been through all kinds of stuff and that is not a sign of weakness, it is a sign of greatness. And over a period of time, God begins to bring forth his purpose. Most people get up out of the bed in the morning to see what's going to happen. And then there are a elect group of people who get up out of the bed to make something happen. 
you have to decide which category you're going to be in. Either you're going to get up on, on the bed and sit on the side of the bed and say, well, Lord, what am I going to do today? Or you're going to wake up with an agenda and an urgency and a direction and a focus. See, when you got direction, you resist distraction. I believe in higher power. Don't know the name, don't know where it's coming from, don't know anything like that. But I believe that this power, and visualize me real quick. Let's say it's a man up there or a woman, whatever, and they have a chart. And when you're born, they say David Goggins, born February 17th, 1975 at 6 a.m. They write the chart down because they can see everything. They know exactly where you're su supposed to be. They know where you're supposed to be. You die, you go to so-called heaven. You arrive at heaven, I'm 300 pounds. I retired as an Ecolab guy, which is okay, it's just a job, whatever. I go up there and God looks at me and he shows me my chart. And my chart on there says, you were supposed to be a Navy SEAL. You're supposed to weigh 185 pounds. You're supposed to be one of the smartest people on the planet, this, this, all this. You see this. And now you're in heaven, you made it to heaven, but you're like, God, Doug, I was supposed to live that life. I was supposed to live that life. And then you find out that the reason why, because we all think that if we pray on it, if we do this, if we do that, whatever, if we don't work, we just, whatever, it's gonna magically happen for us. No, I believe that when I'm all said and done with, my whole job is to outwork the chart. Whatever the chart says about me, the all-knowing power up there, I wanna get up there and say, him look at me and say, I know everything. I didn't see this. I want to feel that. I want to get to the other end of this world and however I'm being judged, whoever's judging me to look at me and say, I did not know, I, I had you at 185, I had you at this, but all this other shit, I was riding as you were living it. I want to, I want to find more, all I can. And in that sack of shit, you have to dive in that to find more. Because if you're not willing to go in there and face yourself, you're not gonna find anything. You're gonna live right here on surface, man, right here on surface. So if there is an ending to this world and there is somewhere to go and there's a judgment, you're gonna get there and you might see a chart and that chart may tell you who the f you should have been. And now you get the rest of your life to think about that. Man, I could have lived a much better life if I just would have just suffered a little bit more. And what can you do when you've done all you can? You just stand. It's one of my favorite gospel songs. Always gives me goosebump fortification when I hear it, especially when Donnie McClurkin sings, prayed and cried, prayed and cried. After you've done all you can, you just stand. Well, I read a story today about a 65-year-old Ukrainian woman who used to pride herself on her beautiful embroidery work and now is sewing bulletproof vests for soldiers and grateful to still be standing to fight the war. It got me thinking about what it means to keep standing in the face of the most grave adversity. Another story, a man named Yuri huddled in a church basement saying, it's hell here. Imagine 200 people sitting in one room for two days. We can't even breathe fresh air. Well, I don't want to imagine it, but I know we are not supposed to turn away as the days drag on and the Ukrainian people keep standing in the face of such terror and devastation. So in our own lives, what can we do to keep standing for what's right, what's just, for what will bring us peace? Martha Beck says, peace is our home. We deserve, you deserve peace. And we know that what the world needs from all of us is more peace. My spiritual practice is stillness when I first awaken, allowing myself the moments of awareness and recognition that it is a magnificent thing to be a human being here and now. And the glory and beauty of that sustains and has brought me a peace that I cannot even explain. There is a richness and a wealth and a peace that goes beyond any material possession or um, 
award or acclaim or anything that you could acquire. The peace of knowing that there is a presence, a force field. I use the word God, but God often seems small compared to what I, I know it to be. That's really emanating and vibrating through all things and that I am a part of that which I call God. <laughs>